fine. You and I were discussing uh, the portion of Exhibit 560 that would be uh, Miss Hughes' initial response. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. And ma'am, specifically, uh, we were talking about um, the last paragraph. Recall that we were talking about some of the content of the last paragraph. Recall that? Yes, sir. Um, to, to help refresh us and bring us back up to speed, could you be so kind as to read that last paragraph? Certainly. Your sister is in love with the guy that loves someone else. He can't be honest with those he cares most about, about his feelings for her. In fact, he won't even allow her to put pictures up of the two of them in places where quote unquote people may see them. He doesn't call her during the day. He waits until after 1 a.m. giving her what is left of him at the end of every day. He jokingly calls her a skank. He tells her to go out with other guys but makes her feel guilty when she does, thus keeping control without having to give any commitment. He kisses her in the dark when no one is around and messes around with her but won't commit to her. People that know both of them have no idea that they are even a quote unquote item. She loves him more than anything and will do anything for him and just wants that mirrored. But it is nowhere in sight because he is not available. She feels insecure about where she stands with him, most of the time too afraid to be honest with him because she doesn't want to lose what she doesn't have. She is sad and confused unless she is talking to him and again, he is not available. Now, doctor, <clears throat> taken as a whole in terms of this paragraph, and somebody who's looked at the whole of this relationship uh, over the course of time, and we're fairly early on in this relationship, what does this paragraph tell you about the scope or the dynamics or the power within the relationship? Well, this, this email is uh, Miss Hughes writing to Mr. Alexander. And, is, and I, I believe Miss Hughes and Miss Alex, uh, let me get my thoughts straight, I'm sorry. Miss Sky Hughes is writing to Mr. Alexander and somewhat summarizes in this paragraph the dynamic that's going on. And I think that she's, she doesn't say it, but she implies that it, he's closeted with her, uh, particularly when he says, people don't know both of them. They have, people don't know, they have no idea that they are even I an item. Uh, talking about how much Miss Arias cares about him, but he's not willing to show that publicly. And so what I see, how I interpret this is that uh, it, she becomes, she is to be closeted. She is not to be out there in public. He's, he's not open about that. Normally when people are involved, they're generally open in showing who the, the individual is involved with romantically. Uh, and I think that Ms. Hughes is pointing out that Mr. Alexander is just not doing that with this, with this area. And is this, in your opinion, something that's kind of early on, if not a uh, first-hand assessment of this T-Dog uh, Dr. Hyde, or excuse me, Mr. Hyde connection that, that you're, you're drawing from the church. Yes, and, and I think that uh, Ms. Hughes in this email, as you'll see in other emails by Mr. Hughes, is capsulizing that, capturing what's happening in that dynamic, and, and is posing the question, which is further down on this same page in the email when it says, what would you, um, what would you tell your sister to do? Move on, right? And so, uh, are we so wrong for advising her to do the same? I think that's what Ms. Hughes is asking uh, Mr. Alexander. Is it so wrong to advise her to move on in light of the above? And I think that's what Ms. Hughes was trying to uh, explain to Mr. Alexander as to why they were telling Ms. Arias to move on. He's not going to be available to you. And as it relates to uh, what we've called uh, Mr. Hyde and T Dog showing you exhibit 699. This isn't Mr. Hyde or T Dog, is it? 
Well, this is, this is Mr. Alexander, this is Mr. Travis Alexander, AKA also known as T-Dog. Um, but I think this is the Mr. Alexander that Mr. Alexander truly wants to be. He was a committed Mormon. He was a spiritual man. I think he really genuinely struggled with this. And I don't think that people knew. I think that people, and you'll see in the other emails, I think that Mr. and Mrs. Hughes were quite surprised at how he felt about Jody, Miss Arias. Um, but I think there was that conflict with Mr. Alexander. Let me show you, and, and you termed him you know, in this picture, you refer to him as Elder Alexander. Elder Alexander, yes. And that's a church term that you're using? That's a church term that is used for the priesthood holder. What I want to talk about, one last thing before we move on, uh, I want to talk about a paragraph uh, going back to uh, Mr. Alexander's uh, first discussion with, uh, or first email, excuse me, to the Hughes's about what they've told in this area. Could you do us a favor uh, and tell us what Travis says about Jody in his own words, beginning with the sentence now? Okay, so th this is an email from Travis to the Hughes, Mr. Hughes. Now, in most cases, I would first ask for some clarity, but I think we can all agree that they don't come any more honest than Jody. Now, if you meant now if you meant things to come off that way or not, it doesn't matter. What I have written is very mild version of how it did come off. In my opinion, you overstepped your bounds and caused way more problems than you solved. I know you were trying to help, but you went overboard. But doctor, one thing I want to I, I want to say or emphasize is, Elder Alexander, this man here, is saying that it doesn't get much more honest than Joseph. That's correct. And your honor, if I may approach the witness. You may. Doctor Fonseca, I want to show you what has been marked as Exhibit Five Sixty One. Be so kind as to uh, take a look at the uh, entirety of those pages and advise us what what you have there. Yes, sir. And, Doctor, could you uh, surmise for us what is uh, contained or combined uh, in what is denoted as Exhibit 561? Okay, this, this Exhibit 561 uh, contains uh, different emails from uh, Ms. Hughes, Travis's friends, Mrs. Hughes' wife to uh, Chris Hughes, and Mr. Alexander, and it's, a, it's similar to the emails that we saw earlier in terms of continuing dialogue about um, this business of the Hughes sitting down for three days talking to Ms. Arias about Travis Alexander, telling, him to move, telling her to move on, and Mr. Alexander finds, finds this out and is now coming to confront the Hugheses. That might be a, a strong word, but brings it to their attention that he's aware, and he's, he's upset, he's hurt. He's surprised, and that's what these emails are about. And Mr. Hughes explaining to, to Mr. Alexander the reasons why, uh, based on the history. So, so the email will show a historical. No, I'm not talking about what it'll show yet. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Okay. So that's. Hey, uh, what specific uh, emails uh, does this uh, exhibit in, encompass? What What is the first email, and when was it sent? You're talking about, I don't know if this is the first email, but this is an well, email. The first email in the packet. Okay. Yeah. The first email in the packet is Wednesday, 
the 31st, January 2007, and from Mr. C.S. Hughes. Well, I don't know if that's Mr. That may be Ms. Sky Hughes. <coughs> no, that's Mr. Chris Hughes. I'm sorry. And uh, this email was sent when? This was sent uh, 31st of January 2007, and it's entitled, My Sincere Apologies. And are there other emails in this exhibit? Yes. If you could be so kind as to post what those are. Uh, there's another email uh, from Mr. Alexander to Mr. Hughes. This is dated January the 31st, 2007. Uh, there's another email here on uh, January the 31st, 2007. I think this is the same conversation going back and forth. It's a continuous email. Uh, this, this one here, sir, um, does not say to and from. It just says C.S. Hughes wrote, and I'm assuming it's to Travis because it says T. All right. And then uh, there's another email from Ms. Sky Hughes. Uh, to Mr. Alexander, dated the 31st of January, 2007. And that's uh, a rather lengthy, it's nine pages, yes. So it's three, it looks like it's three, three separate emails. Governor, we will be moving for the admission of exhibit 561. Any objection? I'm going to object to the writings or the highlight that is there. I kind of it's a copy that doesn't have the highlights that I believe come from defense counsel. I'm going to object to the speaking objection. Right. Approach, please. One is admitted. And doctor, before uh, I show you 561, uh, I want to make clear there are some highlights on this exhibit. You did not make those, correct? <laughs> no. And to begin with, you explained a little bit. This is um, Mr. Alexander's, or excuse me, Mr. Hughes's response to Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. And let me begin uh, the with the uh, the paragraph. I guess it's a series of, um, you see the, the uh, paragraph here first? Yes, sir. Um, can you read that and going all the way down uh, to the end of that uh, yes. first group there? Yes. First of all, let's look at what I know about the T and his lady situation. And no, this is not being critical, it's just stating the facts. In the five years I have known you, you have never committed to one woman, yet you had dozens of women who would have loved, who have loved just that. In those five years, in one instant has been Deanna, but she has been in, in a constant state of I don't even know what since I, don't, since I have known her. I have heard you tell her you love her on many occasions, yet there is no commitment, yet the relationship, whatever it is, continues. Dude, again, not being critical, but you are the biggest flirt this side of the Mississippi. I don't know anyone else that trumps your flirting ability. You say it yourself, the T-Dog pulls chicks, and you do. I have never before gotten involved in your love life, but it has been both saddened me and concerned me how you have hooked up with the ladies and gotten into their hearts only to prove disinterested in the end. But this is none of my business, so I've never said anything. I just laughed 
because the emotional turmoil these girls go through aside he is kind of funny and he has a sort of like a smiley face icon and you add and you add this and you add all of this to the fact that the last time you and I spoke I asked you why you didn't like Jody your response was I don't know it's just not there so, so before we talk about what this means to you <clears throat> putting Mr. <clears throat> Hughes's amusement aside um, we're talking what he's talking about is a five-year history Yes, I believe Mr. Hughes is giving a, a historical account of what he has observed in the relationships that Mr. Alexander has had with women. And so Jody Arias and Travis Alexander, having been together uh, or known each other, dated, whatever sort of relate, whatever label you want to put on the relationship, that's only four months. So we have, so we have uh, over four years, four years and eight months about of history before Jody Arias. Oh yes, this is before Miss Arias, that's correct. And, and then in this sense, the tea dog pulling chicks has nothing to do with Miss Arias until September of 2006, right? That's correct. She was just another chick he pulled, right? Yes. Now let's uh, just, so we're clear, uh, he talks, he references as uh, tea dog also as tea, um, Looking up at the first uh, line there, he also refers to Travis's T as well. Yes. Okay. So we're clear. Now, taking these bullet points or paragraph or whatever you want to call it, what do you make of that as far as Mr. Alexander and his view of the relationship and the kind of view he took towards relationships? <clears throat> The kind of view that Mr. Alexander took towards relationships. What, what, what do you get a history of a sense of, of Mr. Alexander in terms of his his view of dating, whatever you want to put it? Tell me, tell us what you glean out of this. Well, I, what I glean out of this is that uh, Mr. Hughes, who has known Mr. Alexander for a period of time, is giving a five-year history of observing, and he says himself um, that he hasn't said anything. Uh, so I so I have never said anything. I just laughed because of the emotional turmoil these girls go through. Aside, it's kind of funny. Uh, so putting his amusement aside, he's commenting about watching Mr. Alexander uh, have a number of young women being attracted to him, getting involved with him, and then all of a sudden he's not interested. Um, and he's describing that this is the impression that he had of how we felt about Jody because. The last line is, I spoke, I asked you why you didn't like Jody. Your response was, I don't know, it's just not there. Very different from the other emails that I adore Jody. So it, there's a conflict there is what I see. And that the, the fellow has difficulty with intimacy issues. That there is difficulty from, it, it, my impression is that it's difficult for Mr. Alexander uh, being intimate uh, with individuals on a romantic sexual level. He can be sexual and there's intimacy and in sexual, but when you have the romantic involved with the sexual, that's something else. Well, and Dr. I, Dr. Let, let me interrupt you there a bit, because when you say intimacy, I want to make sure we're clarified, because we've talked in how, at this point in time anyway, that Miss Arias and Mr. Alexander have had a sexual relationship, correct? Yes. And that uh, Miss Reed and Mr. Alexander had a sexual relationship or something. Yes. Discuss what, because that would maybe some people might conclude that's an intimate relationship. What's the difference? I think you were starting to, and I want to make sure we explore this the difference between an intimate relationship and a sexual. What are we talking about? Well, um, in an intimate relate when you have an intimate relationship, there is a building of that the couples share together. They do things together, they go places together, the public sees them together, they're acknowledged together. Um, if you go to a restaurant, you see two couples sitting at a table and they're engaged. And when they, they are engaged with one another, they're not aware that there's anything going around them in the restaurant. They're just in, tuned into each other. Um, Mr. Alexander didn't want to have a lot of public things with Miss Arias unless they were traveling and they were away from 
the, the Mormon close tight community that he was from. Mr. Alexander was very generous uh, in his behaviors with other people, and so that's a form of intimacy, uh, but it's not close intimacy. Ms. Arias has talked about uh, the generosity that she has appreciated in Mr. Alexander. Mr. Alexander's friends talk about how generous he is. His house is open. Anybody can come over. He would have people come over and spend time in his house. That's a form of intimacy. But the closer you get to someone, um, the more personable, the more private, the more intimate that you become. Um, if you're just having sex and you're not having the intimate aspect of that, you're not building as a couple so that other people can acknowledge who these two people are. Um, people, who, people who utilize prostitutes, they're not seeing out necessarily dating and engaging and having a long-term relationship. Prostitutes are just for sex, not for intimacy. Even though there are many prostitutes who talk about having men that they don't have sex with, they just talk with. They're not really engaging sexually. They just need somebody to talk with. That's another form of intimacy. But the intimacy that we're talking here that I think there's an absence of, that I think Mr. Hughes is describing, although he doesn't say that, but he says that there's a lack of commitment. There's a lack of, you know, sustaining, really, a relationship. Rather, he's flirting, and then when he has people that are interested in him, he's not interested. And my guess is, and it's a guess, I'm asking speculation, me. my guess. It's just a guess. Yes. Sustained. Well, let me ask you not your guess, but uh, your opinion. On well, my, this. thank you. What I was going to say is that my opinion is that Objection. I don't think Mr. Alexander. Since it's just a guess. Re restate your question. What is your opinion about Mr. Alexander's relates to what we're seeing here? In the previous email when he talks about, I have things to work on and I feel like I might have a nervous breakdown, I th it, it bothers Mr. Alexander is aware his difficulties of not being able to have a commitment. He's not happy with that. He says that in the email, that he's trying to work on that. And I think, and I was going to, I'll stop right there. Well, Doctor, let me ask you this then. Um, when we talk about this sea dog pulling chips and, and things of that nature, is that, is that a bit of a gain to him or is that, how would you describe that? When, when you see that there, this tea dog pulls chips. Well, just in the, I'd say overall, in, after reading all the e emails, the text messages, and becoming aware of who T-Dog is, which is the other side of Mr. Alexander, um, he said this is something that he commonly says, T-Dog pulls for chicks. Uh, Mr. Alexander uh, has been described as being very engaging. He has a presence when he's in the room. Um, he likes the ladies. The ladies like him. And uh, this piece of him, T-Dog pulls for chicks, I think he's aware of how women respond to him. He's engaging, he's affable, he's, he's full of life. I've seen the videos of him. He's, he, ha he had a presence. He had a presence. <clears throat> Doctor, what do you make of the disparity if, what, if anything, I should ask, do you make the disparity of Mr. Alexander saying, you know, how much he adores and loves Jody and wants to be with her, uh, and in, in the previous email, and then at some point in time, uh, he's telling Chris Hughes, I don't know, it's just not there. So you're asking me? Well, what do you make of that disparity? I mean, we have in the course of a, of a day, we have the, uh, a day or so, we have this email where it says he adores Jody and we want to spend the rest of his life with her. And then when he's talking with Chris Hughes, I don't know, it's just not there. What do you make of that difference? I think that's the conflict for him. 
Describe what you mean by this. Well, I, I think that's, that's the conflict for him. I think that Ms. Arias con connected, my impression is, my opinion is that he's connected with Ms. Arias and Aria in a way that he has not connected with other women. You'll see later on he actually says that. Um, and I think that it's difficult for him to reconcile, to be at peace with that. I think that's the conflict for him. Um, Mr. Alexander is an active Mormon. It's a tight community that he was involved with. Um, Ms. Arias? Yeah, let's go with a question. Sustained. Well, talk about the, if you would, Doctor, at least at this point in time, up to this point in time, let's talk about this growing conflict we talked about with Travis and his feelings towards Jody, which, which make him uncomfortable, right? Is that what you were telling us earlier? They make him uncomfortable. Yes. Maybe there's something new that he hasn't experienced in quite the same way. Yes. And this, um, he talked about this beloved Mormon uh, aspect of his life, uh, Travis. Yes. Why is there a conflict there, though? Because in, in many ways, it would seem like it would be an ideal situation. Well, it, it is an ideal situation, but then it, again, it isn't an ideal situation. Because um, in the community, as I understand it, the community that Mr. Alexander comes out of is a, is a tight-knit Mormon community where people are very connected. Um, Miss Arias is not really part of that community. Miss Arias moved into that community. Miss Arias didn't have really a history with these individuals. Mr. Alexander had a history with this community, had a history with these individuals. Um, he was a known quantity to them. Miss Arias came out from another place. She's a convert. She was not uh, raised Mormon. She wasn't really part of that culture. So in many ways, uh, Miss Arias was outside of that circle. And for Mr. Alexander, who is a priesthood holder, who is a very much a Mormon, um, I think values those values within the Mormon community of people who have that lifestyle or that background long term, historically, rather than just being converted. And so I think that's why it's, that was part of the conflict for him. Well, well, let me ask you this, then, as it relates to Jody. You, you talk about this isolation that Ms. Aries is experiencing. We also heard in the prior email that Ms. Aries is also isolated by, by Mr. Hyde being put in the closet, right? Oh, yes. Yes. So even as early as January 2007, we have a relationship that's beginning to go underground that is, that is you're beginning, would you agree with me if I say you're beginning to see the signs that there's a turmoil, that both these individuals are having a conflict with this relationship? You're yes, I agree, agree with that. You're seeing that things are going underground, and you're also seeing the impact that it's having on this area by her going to the Hughes's. And you'll see when later on in the email where they're talking about how pain she is, how, uh, how it's impacting her self-esteem. So that accumulates over time. And Ms. Sky Hughes addresses that in the email. Doctor, why don't we move on then to uh, the next uh, paragraph uh, begins with, so, if you could read that for us. So this is what the context of that, of that, our conversation with Jody was held. I just thought she was another girl on your speed dial. I had no idea your feelings for her ran so deep. None of what I did was justified. But, I, but had I known you were seriously interested in her, I would have never said the things I said. I really, really believed that she, yeah, that she was your next victim. For she, for her to benefit, for her to benefit, and yours, I was doing all that I could to get her to move on. I'm sorry, I had difficulty seeing because of the highlight. Okay. I, I really like you. I really like you, and I really like her. And to my knowledge, 
Let me, I'm just trying to get it in, and I probably did just the opposite. Let's see. Doing fine. All right, let me, let me move it in a little bit. All right, sir. So I want you to be able to uh, That's good. read what's in the uh, yes. highlighted portion. Okay. How about if you start with the, uh, the, I, the sentence here, I really, really. I really, really believe that she was your next victim, and for her, and for her benefit and yours, I was doing all that I could to get her to move on. I really like you, and I really like her. And to my knowledge, you weren't into her. So I was trying to do her a favor, and you too, for that matter. But it looks like all that I've done, I put my shoes in my mouth and out my butt and back into my mouth again. Well, excluding the uh, description, in the, uh, the colorful description in the last paragraph, what, what do we make of this? I mean, what are we making of what's going on here and, and how Jody is being viewed, not only by Travis, but, but by Mr. Alexander's closest friend? Well, uh, I think the, the, the paragraph uh, reflects just what Mr. Hughes is saying. He's surprised. Uh, he, and this is a good friend of Mr. Alexander. He didn't know about Miss Arias. Uh, he thought, as he said, um, that he, I'm sorry, let me just get back to where he saw, I thought he was going to be your next victim. I mean, he was just, I think, from what he's saying here, he's talking about that he likes Miss Arias and he likes Travis, and for her benefit, um, He's not even aware how closeted this has been, and I think he probably becomes aware much later. But here, in this in this paragraph, it's clear that he had no idea that Mr. Alexander had the feelings that he had for Miss Arias. He's surprised by it, and he's remorseful in a sense of what he the things that he had said. As he said, I I would have never said. Uh, what he had to say about uh, Mr. Alexander to Ms. Arias. You know, one question, Doctor, that, that comes to mind, if you can answer it, um, talking about Ms. Arias becoming what I would assume would be the T-Dog, T-Dog, Mr. Hyde's next victim. Victim of what, Doctor? Well, I think Mr. Hughes said it above, uh, gutting. Uh, where he gets attached, or he gets these women attached to them, and then he's disinterested. And that's hurtful. Because if you're, you're feeling warm or in love with someone, and then you find out they're really not interested in you. Let's start with the, uh, if you could start by reading the next paragraph, Doctor. So anyway, in the context above is how I approached this conversation with Jody. But you must know, Travis, this was not bash Travis session. This was a conversation where Jody was sharing her concerns one after another with us. All of what she was telling us added up to the bullets above made for what I thought was very obvious. Travis definitely does not like this chick. With what she was telling us, I thought for sure you didn't like her. What does that mean to you? Is that simply actions speak louder than words? What that means to me is there's a deception going on here. And as I said earlier, there's a mastery here of deception. These are close friends of Mr. Alexander. These are people who have frequent contact with Mr. Alexander. And the line that he says, Travis definitely does not like this chick. That was his impression. <clears throat> Mr. Hughes had seen them together, had had a conversation with Mr. Alexander. So it, it appears that he was, as he says, <clears throat> Travis definitely doesn't like this woman. So there was deception there. And um, he's very surprised. Mr. Hughes is very surprised. And this... These several bullet points we have here. Uh, could you read those for us? Okay, this is Mr. Hughes telling Mr. Alexander the things that Miss Arias had stated. She told us 
how you called her names, but said just kidding. You never call her until very late at night and not every day. You tell her she can date other guys. You kiss her, but you won't let it be public knowledge. You pull down her pics of you and her on ms.com. I read your reply to this. I'm just giving you the list. So we have another consistency, at least, between what Mr. Hughes and his wife said about what's, what's going on here. Yes. Okay. I'll take you to the next page, Doctor. This email. We have a few other points. Uh, if you could read those. She is number two on your MySpace page, second to Deanna, and much, much more. And let me, let me ask you this, and we have this, this same comment, uh, the next, next sentence or paragraph, I guess. Then you add to that the fact that Deanna is still your number one, yet you make out with Jody. What do you, what do you make of that conflict? It sounds like there might be some sort of turmoil between his feelings for Deanna Reed and his feelings for Miss Ayers. Yes. Can you describe that for us based on your review of the relationship? Well, I think uh, I would rather use Mr. Travis's words describing the relationship with Ms. Reed, which is in the email. Okay, sure. Okay. Let's go into the uh, next paragraph. Can you read that for us? Uh, you, okay. Beginning and with... add to that the fact that while you were here at my house, on, my, on the way up, you had spoken to several other girls, including the one in Utah that you showed me a picture of. So based on this, in, at some point in time, in this time period then, Mr. Alexander, or maybe T-Dog, you tell me, is it Mr. Alexander or T-Dog that would show pictures of other chicks to his friends? Well, I, I think that would be uh, Mr. Hyde, T-Dog. Okay. And so he's expressing to his friend that he has interest in uh, girls in Utah as well. Yes. Uh, why don't we go to the next paragraph, Doctor? T-Dog, you add all that up. now. What's in, of interest to me is this T-Dog. He's, he's addressing Mr. Alexander, not Travis, but T-Dog. T-Dog, you, uh, you add all of that up, and what, and what do you think? My thoughts were this, is, this was just another girl that you were playing with and who would end up heartbroken like so many others. For example, Brandy. She was another girl that you called to flirt with recently. She was going to New York with friends. You call her in the middle of the night and talk to her into going to the Super Saturday, Soup Saturday, which she did. And you didn't even throw her a bone. Now that's funny and all until, until that girl is sitting in your living room, confused as all hell, pouring her heart out to you, expressing her love for the guy who, when you add it all up, in my mind anyway, couldn't give a rat's about her. Now I have since learned that you do give a rat's about Jody, but with all that you had given us, I had no way to tell. So yes, I did tell her to get out quick. You did cross the, we did cross the line. I don't know why I did it. I've never done it before with all the girls that you've spellbound and depressed. Why now? I guess because she was here in my home. I could look in her eyes. I could see perfect love for you mixed with pain and confusion. I guess I just snapped. Love can make people do crazy things like snap, right, Doctor? Love makes people do crazy things. Let, let's start talking about this a little bit. You made reference to Tito. You made a specific point to say uh, that Mr. Hughes, in this portion of the email, addresses Mr. Alexander's T-Dog, correct? That's correct. 
And that Mr. Hyde T-Dog aspect of his life deals with when he's talking about pulling chicks and talking to girls and everything else, right? Yes. That's really who T-Dog is, right? It appears that that's who T-Dog is. But drawing your attention back, when he's apologizing and they're talking about other things, he's calling them Travis. Right, or he's using T. Yes. Well, let's, let's talk about this, and you talked about, uh, earlier you talked about intimacy and deficits and things like that, because is this another example of that, or is this more a, a, a T-Dog's game, if you will? It is what? I'm confused by your well, question. This, this, we had, and I'm sorry, uh, we have this, this idea that, uh, you know, expressed by Mr. Hughes that, you know, he's flirting with girls, getting them to go to uh, events, prepaid legal events, and then he's ignoring them. <clears throat> is, this, is this fun? Is this about an inability to be intimate when they get there and he, then he backs off? Can you kind of describe that? I, I think it's the latter of what you just said, uh, that he, he backs off. Um, it's here. Well, I don't know because I, I didn't interview Mr. Uh, Alexander, obviously, but uh, the history in terms of the emails and the description of the relate. Over, over, over. You may continue. The history. But the history uh, in the emails and the texts and all the, the information from Mr. Alexander uh, and his own admission about what he's struggling with, uh, I, I don't know. It may be part of a game for him, but I think that he's also. speculation. I don't know. Over, over. Please continue, Doctor. It may Thank be part you. of a game for him or. It may be, uh, maybe there's a piece of it that is a game for Kim. Uh, the other is it's just who he is. Um, I think he likes women. He enjoys women. They seem to enjoy him. Uh, they've been very uh, generous in their comments as to who, the, who he is, describing him. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not just not quite enough for Mr. Alexander. And he's aware of it. He is aware of it. Uh, he, he talked about that in the other emails about, I have stuff to work on. Um, and it, it appears from his writings that he's uncomfortable with that, and he's, it's, it's stressing him, particularly his age, uh, particularly the community he comes out of, uh, where marriage is very important. He belongs to a singles ward. Once you turn a certain age, 30, 31, 31 then you, you're advanced to another ward. You're not in the singles ward. He was very concerned about that. He spoke about that. He was distressed about that, that he hadn't married. Um. Okay, well, let me, let me ask you this. This young lady here sitting at the defense table, Jody Arias, at one point in time, according to Ms. Hughes, a perfect love. Travis Mr. Nermi, I did not hear the first part I'm of your sorry, question. I'm sorry, this young lady sitting right here. Ms. Arias? Ms. Arias, according to the assessment of Mr. Hughes, in January of 2007, had perfect love. <laughs> Uh, that's what he stated. And but she was also pained and confused. Yes. By how he was treating her. Yes. Is that assessment consistent with your professional assessment of this relationship? Yes. Let me uh, go to the next paragraph, and if you could read that for us. Again, I'm not saying what I did was right. I say what I say simply for you to see where I was coming from. You have to remember, you are my friend. You have been for years. I know the good T, as well as the bad T, and you know me. So I have seen a lot of gals get gutted in your wake. Again, I'm not being critical. I've done my fair share of gutting. 
I really, really, really was convinced that with all the quote unquote evidence, Jody was just another number for you. But I was wrong. But I didn't have much to work with either. And this idea of gutting girls in Mr. Alexander, T-Dog, Mr. Hyde's wake, what do you make of this? Is this more of the same? Is this? I think it's more. Patient gutting. Sustained. What do you make of Mr. Alexander, or excuse me, Mr. Hughes's term, gutting? What does that mean to you? Objection lack of foundation. Overruled. I interpret that as abusive. And how so? Well, getting gutted, you know. It sounds it sounds brutal. It sounds abusive, abrasive. It, it doesn't sound kind, loving, gentle, in terms of how he's talking about his relationship with gals. He said, "I, so I've seen a lot of gals get gutted in your wake." That, that doesn't sound particularly pleasant, favorable. It sounds like there's some meanness there. It sounds like there's some abusiveness there. That's what it sounds like. Let me um, talk about the next uh, full paragraph here. Let me address your other concerns. Also, the A word was used, parentheses, abusive, which is a strong word, by the way. I think what you term rough around the edges, Sky and I would term abusive. So it's just a terminology thing, but abusive is probably not the best word. Let us say rough around the edges. You know you are rough around the edges. I know it, Sky knows it, and Jody knows it. Anyone who knows the T-Dog knows he is rough around the edges. That's part of why we love you. So though a word got thrown in, I think you know what we are talking about. It was all in the context, and you would concur with what was said. We just used too strong of a word to describe it. I will make this as much else as I can write with Jody. I just wish the T-Dog wasn't so secretive about his feelings for this lady loves. A lot of this could have been avoided, but I am not blaming. I'm sorry, wait a minute, I missed a... But I'm not blaming. But I'm not blaming. I'm taking, I take full responsibility for my actions and, again, hope that in light of all this, you can find a way to forgive me. So, Doctor, we have, again, I, I, I know we're not talking about uh, professional doctors in Chris's practice, correct? That's correct. But they are uh, calling him abusive. They are. In January of 2007, they're seeing abusive nature in this relationship then. Early, yes, they are seeing that abusive. And it appears that it, they don't want to use the word abusive uh, because he backpedals and says rough around the edges because Mr. Alexander apparently doesn't like the word abusive. So he says rough around the edges to describe, you know, perhaps a an abusive manner about Mr. Alexander. And this assessment of abusive, this abusive manner, the word they try to tone down, this doesn't include this verbiage of Mr. Alexander calling her a, a, a whore, right? Yes. Doesn't include Mr. Alexander referring to Miss Arias as a slut, right? Yes. And it doesn't include him referring to Miss Arias as a freehold wonder. Yes, yes. And frankly, it doesn't even include knowledge of the sexual practices or proclivities that these two are engaging in at this time, at this point in time, right? That's correct.
Let me uh, draw your attention, Doctor, to uh, the yes. paragraph uh, there as for calling Jody Deanna. Uh, uh, could you read that for us, please? Yes. As for calling Jody Deanna, this was done in fun, but in poor taste. I certainly owe Jody an apology as well. Again, when all of the above is taken into consideration, that I didn't think you liked her any more than any other girl in your life, I was doing all that I could to get her to see she was wasting her time with you. I tried to get her to see how you had not committed to Deanna, yet she was still right there in your life. I was telling her I didn't want her to end up like Deanna, in love yet alone, after years and years. So this was in poor taste. I love Deanna and are as sad for her as I thought I was for Jody. I thought we were all having fun. Everyone was laughing, but evidently I caused pain. I would, however, like to suggest that perhaps one of the reasons she cried while she shared this with you is because she does, she does like you so much and does not want to end up liking you for years in vain. But I was not there, so I wouldn't know. What do we see there, Doctor? It sounds like the formulation of a pattern or concern that Miss Arias is going to fall into a, a similar pattern. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Is that is that what you see as well? Yes. Uh, yes. As it relates to Miss Reed. And this intimacy issue you talked about, how do you place her into this diagnostic or her role, I should say, uh, in Mr. Alexander's life? How do you how do you place that that long term relationship with some with some intimacy, some sexual intimacy, but no commitment? How do you place that? How does that fit into this pattern? <clears throat> Well, as I said earlier, um, Ms. Arias and uh, Mr. Alexander met uh, when they were both coming out of long-term relationships. Um, Mr. Alexander met Ms. Arias approximately nine months after he had terminated with Ms. Reed. And Ms. Reed apparently was still present and available, not only just for perhaps emotional support, but financial. <laughs> Um, and I think that was convenient for Mr. Alexander, and I think Mr. Alexander also felt very responsible and guilty um, that he didn't marry Miss uh, Miss Reed, and I, he stated that in in the email. Um, but Miss Reed wasn't closet closeted. Miss Reed was was an active Mormon. He was not a convert. It's part of that community, very different than Miss Arias. Um, so it's a different dynamic. Was it, I believe it was a different dynamic between Ms. Reed and Ms. Arias. Okay. Let me go to the next page, Doctor. And they apologize in this paragraph. Well, we can read it. Why don't you read the last paragraph when I look through your eyes? When I look through, when I look at this through your eyes, it's shameful. When I look at through my eyes, it makes much more sense. But in the end, we owe you an apology. I personally owe you an apology. I crossed the line. Well intentioned or not, the line got crossed and I am sorry. I felt so sorry for Jody, thinking you were about to gut her. I was trying to salvage her, but I was wrong in doing so, and wish I could have kept my trap shut and not gotten involved at all. And these are people, going back to the previous page, that really cared about Mr. Alexander, weren't they? Yes, they, Mr. and Mrs. Hughes genuinely care uh, about cared about Mr. Alexander, and, and he for them. All right, let's, and, and 
Maybe if you could uh, demonstrate that just by reading this paragraph that begins with, I would not. I would not want to be friends with you because of how you treat your woman, be, be it great or not so great. That has nothing to do with our friendship. I love you as much today as I always have, though I have silently disapproved of some of the things I have observed in your love life, as I am sure you silently disapprove of some of what I do. That's called a friend. Friends are the people who know all about you and still love you. I know if you I know if you weren't really my friend, you would have been gone a long time ago with all of my imperfections. So one of the things, Dr. is Travis was very beloved by a lot of people, wasn't he? Oh, Travis was beloved by many people. Many people found him generous, kind, engaging, and I think that's one of the reasons why people were shocked to see this other side of Travis, because they had no idea. You could hear uh, interviews with friends who actually said it's absurd that he had anything involved with Miss Arias. Um, you have other people saying, friends of him saying, it's impossible. These were friends of Mr. Alexander. They did not know. And this is why I said he was a master at deception, because they were people that were close to him, and Mr. Hughes was one of the close people in his life. And he didn't know. It's clear in the email. He didn't know. Doctor, I want to move on to the next uh, email in this exhibit. Actually, let me. I want to move on to another email in this exhibit. All right, sir. Um, specifically, uh, drawing your attention to uh, the email we have here from Sky Hughes to Mr. Alexander, correct? That's correct. And just uh, as a point of clarification, um, Ms. Hughes uh, says in her response, we have, a, we have an email that's kind of interposed between what Travis originally wrote and Mrs. Hughes' response, correct? Yes, and this is how she is, in, she is responding to him in all caps, and she explains that at the top of the email in writing back to Mr. Alexander in response to him. So what he writes is in, in uh, regular case, sentence case, and in the second paragraph, it's in all caps, and this is how she's responding to the points that he's mentioning. All right, Doctor, just to um, pick up, kind of since it's been a while, we've seen this, this initial email. We have uh, Travis talking about the, the three-day discourse about how what a jerk he is and how abusive he is to women. Do you recall that paragraph from this morning? Yes, that's the above paragraph where he says, I am a jerk and I am abusive to women and that she is blind to the type of person I really am. This is what she, Mr. Alexander is writing to Ms. Hughes about the things that they had told Ms. Arias. And Ms. Um, Hughes is responding in all caps and if you could begin, uh, Dr. Reading, uh, the paragraph in the all cap written by Ms. Hughes. I knew Jody would go to you with everything I said. I don't say that in a bad way, or I wouldn't have not said it. In fact, I had hoped she would because that would open the gate to discuss why I said what I did, which would allow it to come from me, not her, and she could tell you how she feels. I've been in this situation. It's a self-esteem thing. It's easier to say they said this because it doesn't, quote, unquote, rock the boat, end of quote, between you two. But her concerns are addressed without her being, quote, unquote, demanding or a, quote, unquote, jerk. Knowing this, I hope you can see that this is not about ripping you up. It's about her being upset with where she is in this relationship, in love with you, seeing a future, but being a booty call. Again, we're looking at actions, not words. The capitalization really comes across firm and yelling. 
make sure you don't read this, read it in this way. Okay, doctor. Um, let's begin um, by talking about, Ms. Hughes makes the comment about this being a self-esteem thing. She makes a comment there. I need to find, yes, I find it, okay. It is a self-esteem thing. Is, is, is Ms. Hughes right? Is this the, the sort of discourse or relationship that's going on, this closeted relationship that Jody's having with T-Dog or Mr. Hyde, does this begin to become a, to use Ms. Hughes' words, a self-esteem thing? Yes, it has an impact. How so? Well, you, you love somebody. You want to show them that you love them. You want to show them off. You want to share them with other people, family, friends. And yet, this person doesn't want that. It affects you. Like, what's wrong with me? How come? What did I do? You start questioning yourself. It impacts your, your self-esteem, your well-being. Uh, this is the person that you love. Why is this person feeling like a shame or wanting to closet me. You feel insufficient in some ways. Feel insufficient, not whole. Don't really totally make the package, so to speak. And when one feels inefficient in a relationship with some of these proclivities, these sexual proclivities that you were talking about earlier, do they tend to want to fill that gap? Yes, I think so. Okay. And we'll talk more about that later, but uh, what, what, what um, there's this last sentence, in love with you, seeing a future, but being a booty call. And we're talking about actions, observations that Scott Hughes is making, right? Yes. And again, when we're talking about the person making these observations, we're talking about a close friend of Mr. Alexander. Yes, I think Ms. Hughes is being as candid as she can um, with Mr. Alexander. Um, she cares about him. He's a friend. They both care about him. She's being very honest and forthright about some things that she sees about the relationships that he has with women. Uh, Mr. Hughes did that. Ms. Guy Hughes did that. And to Mr. Alexander's credit, um, in the email that we saw before, um, he acknowledges some of those things and uh, is appreciative of them speaking to him about it. He, he cares about the Hughes as well. And going back to this uh, being a booty call, again, based on the information we have, Ms. Hughes is making this assessment without even knowing the full extent of the sexual behavior that's going on, isn't she? It appears to be so. Now, moving forward uh, with this, uh, we see that uh, it appears she's uh, looking at the first sentence after the, the stars that she's no longer doing capitals, and her her uh, responses then are, are followed by the stars, correct? Yes, so instead of using all caps, she's asterisking uh, just prior what her response is going to be. Okay. So, and we're talking then, in Ms. Hughes, in this first initial paragraph, uh, starred paragraph, I should say, she also mentioned that you were continuously calling her Deanna. Again, this is Travis saying that Chris and Sky Hughes are calling this Aries Deanna. Yes. Okay. And if you could then, why don't we uh, begin with the uh, Chris Hughes. Uh, Chris used it as an example that she needs to get change or she would be in the same boat. I know with the emotions you're fe you are feeling and trying to do what you need to do with Deanna. This was like a slap in the face, but to me, it is a way of describing Jody's undying love for you in hopes of change with no change in sight. So again, at this point in time, January 2007, Mr. Hughes says Jody Arias has nothing but pure love in her eyes for Mr. Alexander, correct? We saw That's that correct. a few moments ago. 
And Mrs. Hughes is saying that Ms. Arias, in January of 2007, in her assessment, has an undying love for Mr. Alexander, right? Yes. They both acknowledge that Ms. Arias is in love with Mr. Alexander. And, Doctor, I asked maybe a little inartfully earlier about this idea that at the same time, this dynamic, it seems like both Chris and Skye are pointing out the idea that Mr. Alexander still has some feelings for Ms. Reed. Yes. Does that play into this at all, or do you believe it's just an entirely kind of aside to the relationship that he's having with Ms. Arias? It's a little bit of both, and I think that Mr. Alexander, as I said earlier in my testimony, Mr. Alexander describes the relationship with Ms. Reed in an email where he talks about how they work together and how it has changed over time, and I think he's talking about the last year since he was involved with Ms. Arias. We continue on, Doctor. We're talking about, again, it was referenced earlier, and it's referenced again about this non-clinical diagnosis of Travis being effed up in the head and Jody having her own problems, and what we see here is Ms. Hughes' response, correct? Yes. Okay. And could you be so kind as to read that for us, Doctor? Yes. I would not have gotten this from it. It was not like that. If it had been where we kept bringing up what a jerk you were and trying to force her to feeling this, I would recommend never to speak to us again. The reality is she would sadly and torn up tell us things, and I would tell her that I wished I had done in the same situation. It wasn't about you. It was about that she should not allow you to hurt her anymore. It was advice from one girl to another about things you were doing. When she told me what you were saying, I did say, that isn't right. It's abusive. He's not nice to girls. He is mean. And if he is talking to you like this now, it would be worse when you get married and you had kids to think about. You wouldn't want your daughter to be with someone that talks to her like this, nor makes her feel like this. And I still think this is true. Had you joked about Josh calling me a skank, fine. Probably not right, but I would laugh. But I am also not in love with you. That would hurt her a lot more than me. You said you wanted to be refined. This is how that works. It means giving up parts of you that are okay to give up. You may feel that's, quote, that's me if she doesn't like me. Thank you. I'm not going to be somebody else, end of quote. That's not you. That's the T-Dog. Travis said he wants to get married and be refined. So I hope this doesn't offend you. When I write this out, it sounds worse than when it came out of my mouth. When spoken, it was spoken with concern, not anger. I get upset towards the end, not with Jody, but I will explain that at the end of this letter. Okay. Before we go back and start dissecting a lot of this verbiage, you know, you have talked about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Travis and T-Dog, and it appears in the first sentence that there's good... Ms. Hughes is making this same assessment, if you will. That's not you. That's the T-Dog. Yes, that's not you. That's the T-Dog. And that is what I call Mr. Hyde. It is that part of Mr. Alexander that is described by Mr. and Mrs. Hughes of him being abusive to women. And she's concerned that in the email, she said, when spoken, it was spoken with concern, not anger. She's not angry with him. She's just concerned that he does this, that he behaves, that he acts this way. 
Um, what well, let, me, let me ask you this. Do you feel like somehow having this Mr. Hyde or this distinction, his friends even making this distinction, does T-Dog have more license? Does T-Dog have more leeway with them? T-Dog has a lot of leeway. If when you see, uh, I don't know if, if you will see, but if you uh, look into the, the interviews with uh, Mr. Alexander's friends, um, Mr. Uh, Hyatt, one of Mr. Alexander's friends, talks about that he's never been with anybody who refers to everything in the third person. T-Dog is hungry. T-Dog wants to go now. T-Dog is tired. Travis, Mr. Alexander doesn't say, I, Travis, I'm tired. He will talk in the third person. And this seems to be acceptable for the Hughes as well. And they refer to him almost as though it's another person within Mr. Alexander. And that's why I refer him to Mr. Hyde, because a lot of people don't know the secret life of Mr. T-Dog, uh, which is the sexual relationship, the ongoing sexual relationship that he has with Miss Arias. And the T-Dog, uh, he gets more leeway. Um, it is the rough side of Mr. Alexander, as Ms. Mr. and Ms. Hughes describe. Um, so they give more leeway, and I think it's because they care about him. Um, they genuinely care about Mr. Alexander. And they certainly were alone in that, right, Doctor? No, Mr. Alexander was, uh, was well-liked by a lot of people. Hold, hold on a second. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your objection. Relevance. Objection. I still didn't hear you. Uh, relevance. Overruled. I'm sorry, Doctor. You can, you can answer now. My question was that, that Mr. Alexander was beloved by a lot of people, wasn't he? He was beloved by a lot of people. A lot of people. You see that today. They've been very loyal to him in many ways. Um, and they talk in very endearing terms. And my guess is that the family in hearing my testimony. Such speculation, my guess is. Sustained. Okay. Well, Doctor, let's, um, let's talk, go back. Actually, Judge, it might be a big time. All right, we're going to take the afternoon recess. Ladies and gentlemen, please be back at 3.15, 3.15, 15 minutes. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. Thank you.